Hello students, welcome to today's class. Today we are going to finish unit number seven. For this, you are going to listen to a conversation between Helen and her father mm -hmm, about Helen's arrangement for her trip to Ethiopia. Okay, so you are, I'm gonna play the audio and you have to select if Helen is feeling confident, depressed or surprised. And if, if her dad is feeling angry, embarrassed, or worried. All right, here goes the audio, pay attention. Track four. Who's picking you up at the airport? I told you, dad. I know, but I'm worried. Ethiopia is a long way from here. Okay, let's go through it again. I'm arriving in Addis Ababa at 10 o'clock in the morning and the volunteers coordinator is meeting me. That's Bob White. He's taking me to my accommodations. And you're staying with a host family? Yes, I'm staying with an Ethiopian family. Don't you want to stay in a hotel? No, I want to have an authentic experience. So I'm staying with the Adoy family. You have to write down their name and address for me. Yes, don't worry. Then I'm starting work on Monday. And where exactly are you working? In a small town near Addis Ababa. How are you getting there? By bus. Mrs. Adoy is going to make sure I get the right bus. When are you coming back? On September 15th, just in time for your birthday. Okay, very good. So how is Helen feeling? Confident, very good. And how is her dad feeling? He's worried, that's right, okay. Now, in the exercise number two, I'm gonna play the audio again, and now you have to choose the correct information, okay? For example, Helen is arriving to Addis Ababa at 10 a.m. or p.m., okay? So, here goes the audio again, please pay attention. Track four. Who's picking you up at the airport? I told you, Dad. I know, but I'm worried. Ethiopia is a long way from here. Okay. Let's go through it again. I'm arriving in Addis Ababa at 10 o'clock in the morning and the volunteers coordinator is meeting me. That's Bob White. He's taking me to my accommodations. And you're staying with a host family? Yes, I'm staying with an Ethiopian family. Don't you want to stay in a hotel? No, I want to have an authentic experience. So I'm staying with the Adoy family. You have to write down their name and address for me. Yes, don't worry. Then I'm starting work on Monday. And where exactly are you working? In a small town near Addis Ababa. How are you getting there? By bus. Mrs. Adoy is going to make sure I get the right bus. When are you coming back? On September 15th. Just in time for your birthday. Okay. So here are the answers if you want to check them. And then for the next exercise, you're gonna call your classmates. You're gonna create a video meeting in Microsoft Teams. And you're gonna ask them, in what situations do your parents worry about? For example, do your parents worry about when you don't answer the cell phone? Or when you go out and arrive late? Or maybe if you have travel on your own, do your parents worry in those cases? So you're gonna tell your classmates when your parents worry. Okay, so please pause this video, call your classmates, and, and when you finish, we'll continue. Okay, now we can continue with the grammar section. Here we have the sentences A to F in listening exercise two 
all use the present progressive to talk about the future. Okay, is the following explanation true or false? So here we have that we are using present progressive. He is arriving, Helen is arriving, Bob is taking her, she's staying. All these sentences are in present progressive and we're talking about the future. She's coming back in time for her dad's birthday in the future, right? So now we're using the future. Would you say that this sentence is true or false? You can use the present progressive with a future time expression to talk about future arrangements. This is true, okay? Why? Let's explain this. Well, uh, first of all, what is an arrangement? An arrangement is a, a plan or a preparation for a future event, okay? This is an arrangement. So when you have a plan for the future, when you already have everything organized, you can use the present progressive to talk about. For example, he is arriving tomorrow. She is in coming with him tonight. Where are you meeting them next week? Or for example, imagine that you are talking with a friend and your friend tells you, hey, let's watch a movie later. And you tell him, sure. So you already have an arranged plan. For and we could say, my friend and I are watching a movie later. We are using a future time expression to talk about a future arrangement. Another example could be if he tells you, let's visit the new museum tomorrow. But you say, I can't, I'm busy all week. So we could say, we aren't visiting the new museum tomorrow. Again, we're using the present progressive with a future time expression to talk about plans or pre uh, preparations for a future event. All right. As you can see here, we're using a, a present progressive in affirmative form, and here we are using it in negative form. To do this is super easy. You use for the affirmative form, you just need to write the verb V and then the next verb in ing. My friend and I are watching, okay? Like we're talking about my friend and I, that is we, we use the verb are. Again, we have a um, we, so we use the verb we are, but in this case in negative, we are not or we aren't, and then the main verb in ing. We aren't visiting the new museum tomorrow, okay? Then in the interrogative form, first we write the verb be and then the subject. And after the subject, the main verb in ing. As you can see here, the verb be for your brother, like it is he, we use is. Is your brother coming for Christmas? Again, we're using a future time expression. All right. Very good, guys. Now, Let's do the exercise number two that says, in many situations, be going to and the present progressive are both possible. How is this? Well, when you use the verb be going to, like I am going to do this, I am going to watch a movie, we are going to go out, is because you also talk about future plans, but in uh, the verb be going to, you can also use it to talk about future intentions. Like, I am going to study a new career, okay? So this is an intention that I have. It's not a plan, we don't have a date, it's just an intention. And uh, the present progressive for future, obviously, we can only use it for future plans. We cannot use it for future intentions, only for future plans. So when you talk about uh, future arrangements, you can use either be going to or present progressive. Like here, I'm going to meet a friend after class or I am meeting a friend after class. Both answers are possible. So for this exercise, if both options are possible, you're gonna write a check mark. But if the present progressive is not possible, you're gonna put a cross like here because it says, I'm going to start 
uh, guitar lessons one day. So this is not a plan, right? This, this is not an arrangement because we don't have a date. We just say one day. So I have the intention. Like it is an intention, you're only, you're gonna write a cross because it is the present progressive is not possible. Okay, so please pause the video and complete this exercise. All right, now I'm gonna show you the answers. As you can see here in the letter C and D, like we have a specific day, this evening, this weekend, we can use be going to or present progressive because we're talking about future plans. But in letter E and F, like we have one of these days or um, in this case, like we have one of these days is an intention. And all, then in the letter F, be careful because it says, I'm going to win uh, my tennis match this weekend. Well, in this case, this is a prediction, okay? Because we don't actually know that you're gonna win. I mean, it's not like you can plan winning, right? So this is more like a prediction. That's why you cannot use uh, present progressive, okay? And then again, in the letter G, we have a specific day. So it is a plan. And in the letter H, we have one day, so it is just an intention. Okay, very good. Now, you're gonna call your classmates again, and you're gonna ask them if any of these sentences are true for them. For example, if you are going to start uh, guitar lessons one day, well, tell your classmates that sentence letter B is true for you, all right? Please do it and when you finish, we'll move on. Okay, now we can continue with the next page. Here we have language for life. Mo Finkenstein M is calling a big chemical company. Underline the most appropriate expressions to complete his conversation with the receptionist, R. Okay, so please take a look to this conversation and underline the, the expression that you think is the most appropriate. When you finish, I'm gonna play an audio so that you can check your answers, all right? So do it and we'll move on in a moment.
All right, now I'm gonna play the audio so that you can listen to the conversation and check your answers. Here it goes. Track five. Good morning, Regal Chemicals. Could I speak to the CEO, please? Do you mean Mr. Carr? Yes, that's right, Mr. Carr. Who's speaking? My name's Mo Finkelstein. Hold on, please, and I'll try to put you through. Hello? I'm afraid Mr. Carr is out right now. Oh, do you know when he'll be back? I'm not sure. Would you like to leave a message? Yes, please. Okay, hold on a moment, please. Okay, what would you like to say? Please tell Mr. Carr that the group of Campaign Against Global Warming wishes to talk to him to know what Regal Chemicals is planning to do to stop polluting the atmosphere and destroying the planet. All right. If you need to listen to the audio again to check your answers, you can rewind the video. Very good. Now let's move on to the exercise number two. In the conversation, we uh, listened to some expressions that are normally used when you talk to an office. Mm -hmm. For example, could I speak to and the person, please? So uh, first, I'm gonna play an audio so that you can repeat the expressions and then I'm gonna explain what each expression means. All right, so here goes the audio, pay attention. Track six, A. Could I speak to the CEO, please? B. Who's speaking? C. I'll try to put you through. D. I'm afraid Mr. Carr is out right now. E. Would you like to leave a message? F. Hold on a moment, please. All right. Now let's see. The first expression that we have is, could I speak to the CEO, please? When you call to an office or to a company, uh, like you should speak in a formal way. You, when you want to talk with a specific person, you say, could I speak to then the name of the person or the position that they have in that work and then please. For example, imagine that you call a telap and you want to speak with the coordinator, you could say, could I speak to the coordinator, please? Or imagine that you call your university and you want to speak with the, the principal. Could I speak to the principal, please? In this case, remember that the CEO is like the president uh, in a company, okay? Then normally a receptionist uh, will attend your call and ask you who's speaking so that you can give your name, okay? Then the receptionist also will tell you, I'll try to put you through. To put you through is that passes the phone call from her phone to the phone of the person you're trying to contact. Mm -hmm. That is to put someone through. When you change the line of the call, from one person to another, all right? Then we have the, the receptionist says, I'm afraid Mr. Carr is out right now. This is a common expression that a receptionist could use when the person you want to talk to is not uh, available, okay? They say, I'm afraid, then the name of the person is out right now. And then they tell you, would you like to leave a message? when you want to uh, tell them, for example, here, please tell Mr. Carr that, and you give the message that you want to leave. And finally, another common expressions for receptionists are uh, when they tell you, hold on a moment, please, so that you have to wait just a moment. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now uh, I'm going to play the audio again so that you can repeat the expressions one more time. Okay, here it goes. Please repeat. Track six, A. 
Could I speak to the CEO, please? B. Who's speaking? C. I'll try to put you through. D. I'm afraid Mr. Carr is out right now. E. Would you like to leave a message? F. Hold on a moment, please. Okay. Now what you're going to do is that you're going to practice the conversation that we have in exercise one. You're going to practice with one person. So you have to call him or her in Microsoft Teams. And then you're going to take turns. One is going to be Mo and the other is going to be the receptionist. And then you swap places. Okay. So please do it. And when you finish, we'll continue. Okay, now let's continue. We're gonna move on to the next section, life skills, social responsibility. How green are you? First, we're gonna play, I'm gonna play an audio and you're gonna listen to the podcast of keeping your home, your home green. Here, you're gonna note the issues in each room. What problem is in the living room, in the kitchen, in the bedroom and in the bathroom? You have to write them here. Here goes the audio, please pay attention. Track seven. Today we're talking green issues. We're here at my home with our resident expert, Phil. Hi, Phil, how are you today? I'm good. Today, I want to talk about your home. You may think you're very green, recycling your garbage, for example, but there is so much more you can do. I'm going to pick on Katie if that's okay. Uh, sure. Let's go into your living room. Is your TV on standby? Yes, the red light is on. I always turn it off when I'm not watching it. But it's still on if it's on standby, and it's still using electricity. To save energy, we have to turn it off completely. Oh, okay. Let's go into the bedroom. Is the window open? Yes. It gets really stuffy in here. And the heating is on? Ah, I see. Wasting more energy. Exactly. And in the bathroom, do you run the tap when you're brushing your teeth? Uh, sometimes. Up to 14 liters of water comes out every minute. We waste a lot of water. You're making me feel really bad. Finally, we're in the kitchen. I guess the fruit and vegetables are from the supermarket? Yes. What's wrong with that? Nothing. But if you buy from local markets, you only buy local produce. Just think of all the gas used to transport melons from another continent. You got me again. Very good. Now, uh, let's check the answers. In the living room, what problems are in the living room? Well, that the TV is on standby. Remember when uh, it is on standby, it is when you're not watching it, but uh, you leave the TV on. And there is the screen that maybe you don't have a show, but it is in standby. Then in the bedroom, we have the window open with the heating on. Remember that the heating is the device we use when it is cold 
and we want to heat or uh, a room like the air conditioner but instead of cold heat then in the bathroom we have that 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 she run the tap water uh, brushing when she brushes the teeth uh, this is sorry the tap not tap water this is the tap okay so when you brush your teeth it is bad that you run the tap this uh, when you say run is not like running <laughs> like the exercise it is just to leave the tap open but the correct expression is to say run run the tap because the water is running okay and finally in the kitchen the problem is that fruit and vegetables are from the supermarket instead of buying them from local places okay very good now in the exercise two you're gonna work with a partner and you're gonna discuss what other things can you do around the home to be more environmentally friendly okay for example uh, not using bags or uh, not uh, turning off the lights when you don't use them i don't know what other activities could you do in your house to be more environmentally friendly okay please discuss this and when you finish in the exercise three you're gonna write uh, uh, the answers for these questions so what actions could you take at your home to be greener for example here we have i'm going to turn off the lights when i leave the room like in here you're gonna write your answers for this question so please pause the video Call your classmates to discuss this and then do this activity, okay? All right, if you're done, we can continue with the last page of the unit. First, we have vocabulary extra, environmental problems and solutions. So here we have a list of some problems and solutions related to uh, the environment. You have to match them with the pictures. For example, the first uh, problem that we have is a carbon footprint. This will be picture number nine. Maybe you don't know what a carbon footprint is. Well, here we have that. Uh, carbon foot footprint is the measurement of the amount of carbon dioxide that someone's activities produce. Okay, for example, when you use a car, when you travel by plane, you are producing carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is a measurement that uh, is used in, to see how much we are affecting the environment. Okay, so this was picture number nine. Please continue with the rest of the pictures and when you finish, we'll check the answers.
All right. Let's continue. Let's check the answers. Well, here we have environmentally friendly products. We can see them in the picture number one. And then we have global warming that you can see very clearly here in picture number seven. Then we have mass produced clothes in number six. Well, these, as you can guess, are clothes that are produced in a big quantity. So this is bad for the environment. Then in the number two, we have organic vegetables. And in the number five, a plastic container. Then we have public transportation in the number four. In this case, we have a bus and a recycle bin in the number three. Finally, we have renewable energy in picture number eight, right? Very good. Okay, for the next exercise, you're just gonna classify the words, the problems and solutions we saw here in problems and solutions. For example, global warming obviously is a problem. And organic vegetables, well, that is a good solution. Then we have, for example, renewable energy. Will this be a problem or a solution? That's right, that will be a solution. So you're gonna write it here, okay? Please do it and then please add your own ideas to each list. What other problem do you think we have in, in our city, for example, that affects the environment? And what other solution could we get in, for, to help the environment? Okay, so do it and we'll continue in a moment. Okay, if you finish, now we'll move on to the last topic of today that is focused on have and have got. Let's do the exercise number one together. First, we have complete the sentences using do, don't, got, have, or haven't. For example, the first question says, do you have a car? Yes, I, what? How do you answer to this question if the answer is yes? Do you have a car? Yes, I do. That's right. And if the answer is no, you say, no, I don't. Very good. Then another way to ask this is by saying, have you got a car? But in this occasion, if you ask, have you got a car? The possible answer is, answers sorry, are yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Okay. Why is this? Well, because when have means to own or possess. For example, I have a car, you have a dog, I have a sister, we have a classroom, okay? So that we own or possess something or someone when talking about family. You can also use have got. Only when we talk about ownership or possession. It's optional for you. You can say have or have got, okay? As like we can see here, you can ask, do you have a car or have you got a car? And it is the same, All right? Very good. Now, please change this, right? Sorry, ask and answer these questions. Mm -hmm. Please write them using have got. For example, and here we have any brothers or sister when you have brothers or sisters, you can say, have you got any brothers or sisters, okay? Then when you finish, you continue with exercise three. Here you just have to check the sentences where have or has can be replaced with have or has got. Remember, when you own or possess something, this is possible. Like in letter A that says, do you have a laptop? You can say, have you got a laptop? Because we're talking about possession. But like in the letter B it says, I always have lunch at home. Well, having lunch is an action, it's an activity. It's not to possess something. So in this case, this is not 
possible, here is not possible to say, I have a good lunch at home, no. All right, do it and when you finish, just rewrite these sentences, that the ones that you checked with have got. For example here, like this is correct to say it with have got, you're gonna write, have you got a laptop? Like this with the rest of the sentences that you checked. And when you finish, that's gonna be it for today's class. Thank you very much guys for your attention and see you in the next class. Take care and goodbye.